Hey everyone, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? I am testing, actually using a microphone. So I wanna hear from you guys, make sure that you can hear the sound. I guess I should move a little bit closer to me. Um, testing one, two, three, because it's about time that we use a better camera and a better microphone for these live streams. So someone can just leave in the comments. Thank you everyone also who is watching. We have a uh, random coconut from Hawaii. Oh my gosh. I would love to go to Hawaii right now. I haven't been to Hawaii since I was eight years old. So I think that um, I am due for a trip there. Let's see, audio is great. Okay, thank you, Uncle Yukon. The audio is great. So um, good, to, good to know, good to hear. And you guys, less than 24 hours ago, SpaceX released a cinematic masterpiece from the Starship launch. Um, a little over a month ago now, they tweeted this saying another step closer to Mars, the first flight test of a fully integrated Starship and super heavy rocket. So in case you don't have a Twitter or you haven't seen the video, let's start off with that. Test to all operators on countdown one. We're going to start our go, no go poll for today's flight. Raptor one, go. I don't hear it on my Good. end, well, and I'm also testing playing the video, so let me know if you can. Good play. morning. On your screen is Starship <laughs> as it awaits our first ever integrated flight test from Starbase, Texas. Flight directors, go for flight. The audio is good Ten, for me. Can you guys nine, hear the SpaceX video? Eight, I'm, not seven, I'm not hearing it on six, my end because my speakers, I guess. Mission. countdown. Check this out. Up next, ship 25 and booster nine. So you guys, it is confirmed. I'm going to remove that from the stream. So it's official. SpaceX has confirmed that they will use ship 25 and booster nine for the next launch. This is something that we asked Elon Musk about in his Twitter subscription space. Uh, when he did a Starship review and he couldn't confirm what combination they would be using at that time. So now with this video, it's announced, it's official, and we know what the combination will be. And we also know that that launch could be in about two months from now, um, which is great. Yes, Daryl says he thinks that he'll be there. So you guys keep two-ish months uh, in mind if you're trying to get to the next Starship launch. I definitely plan to be there no matter what. Also, I have uh, learned from the Zero-G and Moondow folks that my Zero-G flight will probably not be until the fall, maybe October, maybe around Halloween. So um, that definitely gives me quite a large window to Make sure to be at the Starship launch no matter what. And absolutely, I want to be there. Um, so, yes, Michael Maxey. Yes, I saw that Booster 10 was moved to the Rocket Garden yesterday. Um, so, yeah, let's let's get into. So last night on Twitter, Elon shared a couple updates with us, which is 
why I wanted to do this live stream. Um, I, you know, have some notes um, and some fun videos to show you guys. So um, let's see. So, so this two ish month mark for the next Starship launch is past the estimate that Elon gave a few weeks ago during his Twitter space for subscribers. He said from a rocket standpoint, they'd be ready to go in six to eight weeks. But of course, last night, if you're on Twitter, we saw that uh, we could see the next launch in about two months. Elon tweeted, major launch pad upgrade should be complete in about a month. And then another month of rocket testing on the pad. And then flight two of Starship. Dennis, thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoy this live stream. This is just, you guys, we're all, we're all itching for more information about Starship. So I figured that it would just be nice to talk about this live. And I'm also trying to face my fear of doing live streams by myself. I like having a co-host. Um, but you guys, in just 37 days since that 420 launch, Starship, uh, SpaceX has made major progress down at Starbase. And according to Zach Golden, who I wanted to have join us on the live stream today, I'll try to get him on a, another live stream. Follow his channel, CSI Starbase, if you don't already. But he follows stage zero extremely closely. He tweeted the amount of new structural reinforcements on the orbital launch mount far exceeds what he was expecting. Now he says it seems like the first phase of base stabilization may be nearing completion before installation of the water system. He thinks we'll see a massive concrete foundation constructed. And based on past observations, he's guessing two to four weeks until they are ready to install the water cooled plates. Um, let's see, sorry, I'm just trying to, uh, here we go. Uh, just trying to keep up with the comments and also keep up with the notes. Yeah, you guys are putting out your, your guesses for when we're gonna see a launch. Um, so speaking of water cooled steel plates, I want to show you another video and let me make sure that the sound isn't insane for this one. <laughs> All right. Okay, so if that doesn't get you excited, uh, I don't know what does. Um, SpaceX shared that video a couple days ago from a Raptor 3 update. So this is video from a Raptor test firing into a water-cooled steel plate. Elon wrote one hell of a plasma beam, and that is absolutely accurate. So we need that steel plate because the Fondag clearly isn't going to cut it alone. Um, and... Cool. You guys like the update stream so far. <laughs> I am glad. And I'm glad to hear that it is awesome audio. So yeah, we've had, yep. Yep. This is the Raptor V3 testing on a water cooling plate. Um, and that will be really interesting to see because obviously they were working on that behind the scenes before the first uh, test flight, but they thought that the Fondag would be enough. It was not why was it not enough? Because we got a whole ton of these, these concrete chunks uh, just blown from the pad, obviously, because this was a very powerful launch. And here is one of the actual authentic pieces of concrete. Come on, focus. There we go. So I had a very uh, generous viewer send me this little piece of history, and I'm very glad to have it in my collection. Um, it's not it's not actual Fondag, but still it's from the launch. And you guys have seen me show this to you probably a couple times now, but I'm really glad that I have it. It's one of those pieces of the key tiles. So tiny little chunk, but I can say that I found this walking around on the beach shortly after the launch. And it's crazy because still like a month after the launch, people were finding chunks and bits and pieces of the heat tiles washed up on the beach like a month later. So that's pretty wild. Um, yes. So Daryl says the infrastructure they're building under the orbital launch mount is amazing. The water cold steel plates are going to be well supported. Absolutely. And, you know, there is a big team of people down at Starbase who cover these developments 
daily. I mean, they're they're on it. So I would definitely, you guys probably already watched their channels. Um, let's see. Okay. I like this. So we have a studio suggestion. Uh, what would you think about repainting your backdrop wall in a light rose color? I'm thinking that will work in your favor. I'm thinking that I live in an apartment complex and that I probably can't do that, but I probably could maybe use some different kind of mood lighting in here or something. Um, <clears throat> I had started setting up my studio and then three weeks into the move, I broke my femur. And so, um, but yeah, I'm in a place where I can start, you know, revamping or making this office space a little bit better. So I appreciate the suggestion. And uh, little by little, we're gonna make this thing, we're gonna make this thing look really good. But I do want to say I'm so excited to go back down to Starbase for the next launch. I plan to watch it from the same roof there at Margaritaville, that is a recently renovated new hotel. They opened on March 30th which was pretty great timing considering the first launch was on 420. So they were barely open. It's a beautiful hotel. Thank you, Jason, for the super chat. And um, <clears throat> they said that I could come back there. So it was a great place to stream because if you go down to Starbase and you want to watch a launch, most people meet up at Isla Blanca Park. There's definitely a lot of room there for thousands of people to watch, but it is really crowded. And the biggest issue that I had with it is that there's like no service because there's so many people. So I plan to go back down to Margaritaville, stream from the roof again, and um, hopefully, you know, make some improvements from my first stream. Every time that I stream a rocket launch, <laughs> I'm laughing because of that one time that I forgot to turn around, okay? Um, but I'm learning every single time. And so, uh, Hope to get better at that. But I don't know. The last launch I was able to interview May Musk and Kimball Musk. So like how much better can it get? I guess better would be watching it in the control room with Elon. And I don't know. We'll we'll cross our fingers. <laughs> um, so we're also seeing an expansion of the. Oh, wait, I want to show you a clip from the roof before before I um, before I move on to the next note here. Let's see. Okay, yes. So Michael makes a good point. Elon is suggesting that the next Starship launch will begin at reduced power, then ramp up after clearing the launch table. So they learned as well. I learned from my live stream things that I could improve upon. And obviously, SpaceX learned a great deal of lessons from this first launch and changes that they would like to make for the next one. So, um, very excited to see how it goes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's play this video. So there is Kimball Musk and general manager. The guy on the left works with Margaritaville. Very nice man. Um, and you can see in the background that is the MX25 super high powered camera that NASA was actually using on top of the So NASA, the man working with NASA, invited me up on the roof. Not NASA. For getting me an opportunity to be up there on the <laughs> Let's see. Reading some of your comments here. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, and you know what? I think next time I'm going to wear my new cowboy hat. Okay. You guys say video audio. So I can't hear when I'm playing these videos, I can't hear them on my end. Again, I'm experimenting with running the live stream and a new setup. So thank you for letting me know. I will turn them down because there's another clip that I want to show you that I definitely don't want it to be too loud. So Anthony, thank you for letting me know that it's a little bit too loud. But let's talk about the expansion of Star Factory because not only are they making repairs to the orbital launch mount, 
and the pad area, but they're also in the process of expanding Star Factory. And Elon actually confirmed this expansion in a reply tweet to, once again, Zach Golden with CSI Starbase. Um, he does great work. And let's see what his image is here that he pulled up. So uh, here I've pulled up Twitter and I've pulled up the image from RGB aerial photography that Zach tweeted and Elon replied to. So Zach shared this image marking that everything shown in red is the process of being disassembled. And that green area is the beginning of the phase two of the Star Factory expansion. He wrote, assuming that Star Factory will extend into the areas currently being cleared, this will be absolutely massive. And I was glad to see that Elon confirmed this with a one word <laughs> reply of yes. So uh, thank you to RGV Aerial Photography. Mauricio does great work. Zach also does amazing work. So if you don't follow them already, make sure to follow them on YouTube and Twitter. You guys are still making some suggestions about my studio. How about cloth backdrops of various colors, including a chroma key color for amazing face over video shots? Um, how about this? At the end of this, live stream. I will show you a little bit of my setup here because I do have a green screen that's set up and then I have this bookcase behind me. So maybe if you guys see what I'm working with, you can get some inspiration here. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, that's a good point. If everything is built, it will be more difficult to see any progress of Starship. I feel like that's been, you know, one of the main concerns is how long will we have this public access or this much access to seeing what's going on down at Starbase. So if you haven't made it down there yet, I would highly suggest making a trip down there, especially if you can get there around the time of the next launch. But even if you can't get there for a launch, I still think it is well worth the trip. You guys in the comments can confirm that it is worth your time to make a trip down to Starbase. In other news, <clears throat> SpaceX will join a lawsuit as a co-defendant with the FAA. This is probably not a surprise. We knew that there was going to be an environmental lawsuit. Of course, the launch did leave a mess of the concrete chunks and the dust, um, but SpaceX is trying to get back to launching as soon as possible, and a delay would cause a lot of issues, including a financial impact and issues launching the V2 Starlink satellites. So that lawsuit was filed on May 1st, and it claims that the FAA didn't properly assess the damage that SpaceX's giant Starship ro rocket would cause to the environmentally sensitive lands surrounding the South Texas launch site. So let's see. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the comments. I see I see in my uh, peripheral that there's a lot of comments going on. Um, yeah, so we know that the FAA approved 20 Starship launches annually for the next five years from Starbase. Oh, oh, I like that idea. Anthony, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Anthony wants to know, perhaps on your next Elon interview, you can ask if YouTube press, like me, Tim Dodd, Marcus, well, he would have to come from Tasmania, um, but could get some regular interior tours to keep the public culture alive. That is a great idea. Um, yes, I, I love this idea. Obviously, we were so lucky to have that three-part tour with Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut, and Elon, but it would be nice to have some regular tours of what's going on on the inside down at Starbase. Um, that would be awesome. One of the things that I would love to tour near me here in Austin is the new Starlink facility that is in Bastrop County. So that building is looking amazing from the outside. And of course, I would love to see the inside. Why do I think I'm qualified for this tour? Because I got my start on the channel Ellie in Space by covering Starlink and the early days of the Better Than Nothing beta program. So I feel like, you know, Elon gets interviewed a lot at 
the, you know, Gigafactory and Starbase, maybe not a lot, but he has been interviewed there, but he hasn't been interviewed at the Starlink facility yet. So that would be really cool. If you guys support this, let me know. <laughs> um, and another super chat. Thank you, Jason. Yay, Ellie live. Yes, we are doing it live. F it. We're doing it live. You guys know the line. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me live. It's interesting because for being a news anchor and reporter for almost 10 years, I get like really anxious to do the lives by myself. I kind of want a co-host, um, but I realized that you guys follow my channel because you appreciate my work. So it's okay to keep it casual. And um, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Yes. Andres wants to know, he likes my one-on-one -on -one interviews. Do you have any planned in the near future? I actually do. I'm pretty excited to interview this new person. Um, I have a couple live streams actually planned for this next week that maybe you might be interested in tuning into. On Wednesday, I will be interviewing Jonathan McDowell. He is our favorite astronomer, a Harvard astrophysicist, and we are going to be doing a live stream on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So we're just going to kind of have a space news update uh, chat because I haven't talked to him on a live stream in a while. So if you would like to ask some questions to Jonathan McDowell, make sure to tune into that. On Thursday evening, before I leave for my trip to Florida, I will be doing a live stream with Scott Walter and Gary Schneider. We're going to be talking about Optimus, uh, the Tesla bot, obviously, we're going to be talking about some EVA suit upgrades. We're going to be talking about kind of a whole, you know, mishmash of things. So if you're interested in that, that will be, and maybe you can't make the morning time, <clears throat> join us on Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time. <clears throat> but to answer your main question, do I have any more one-on-one -on -one guests that you guys haven't heard from yet? Well, I'm going on a trip to Florida June 2nd through the 6th to cover the uh, SpaceX commercial resupply mission. And I realized that Phil Metzger lives there uh, in Florida. Phil Metzger is a planetary physicist. Uh, and so I asked him if I could meet up with him in person, interview him, and he's going to give me a very interesting tour as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. You may or may not follow him on Twitter or know who he is, but telling you, you'll you'll really appreciate um, the interview. I know that for a fact. So that is definitely uh, <clears throat> something that you can expect to see in the coming weeks. Sorry, there's been a million comments since I have been <laughs> just rambling on here. Uh, let's see here. Tank watcher Vince. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate you guys tuning in here. Uh, wicked kid one show wants to know when will I start that series with the angry astronaut? I don't know. You have to ask him. <laughs> uh, he asked me if I could do some voice acting on his channel and absolutely 100%. I would love to do that. I haven't heard a timeline on that, but I'm available whenever he wants to start that. I know that he is extremely busy. He pumps out way more videos than I do, so he's doing a great job. Um, but I am looking forward to that. I love, you know, co-hosting or collaborating with Angry Astronaut. Really, anyone on Team Space. It has been so much fun to collaborate with folks, and I know that you guys obviously enjoy that as well. Um, so. Angry Astronaut would love to do another interview with him soon because there's always stuff to talk about. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Interview the Canadian astronaut. Uh, I think you're probably referring Chris Hadfield. I have reached out to his team and I got a no, or at least at the current time. So it's funny, you guys like to suggest a lot of the same people, which I appreciate, but there are some people that I've reached out to and they're like a hard no or too busy at this time. So <laughs> I almost feel like I should have a list of people that are a maybe or like are a no so that you guys know, no, no, 
Uh, for example, Amy Shiratel, I've tried to interview a few times with Vintage Space, and she's not interested. She says that she's doing different stuff these days, so she didn't think that it would be appropriate, which she was very polite, but... Um, mm. Stephen Lewis, yes. Kathy Luters would be a great interview. Absolutely. That is something that I will work on. Okay. Oh, there's another video that I want to show you. This is from Shamara Myers on Twitter. And I saw this just this morning as I was kind of preparing these notes. This is of her kindergarten class cheering for Starship. And you saw my video that I did uh, about a week and a half ago of the Starship photographer who got the photo of the child cheering for the launch. And so here's just uh, another version of that, but a video version. And let me make sure to turn the audio down because these kids are loud. They're really excited. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Doesn't that just make your morning? That is so cute. Yes. So this is what I like to see. They're going. I mean, how could you not be? Yeah, so it looks like you guys like that video. I really love that video. Thank you to Shamara Myers on Twitter for sharing that. That made my morning seeing that, and I just had to share it with you guys. And I will say this is kind of similar to kind of similar to like a news broadcast format, right? I mean, it's not as organized, but <laughs> news broadcast format, we usually had 30 minutes to, with commercial breaks, to produce a show, have a rundown. Usually at the end of the show, we would have something cute like that called the kicker, something, you know, lighthearted to end the show on. And so it's been almost 30 minutes here. And I'm really curious to hear from you guys how you enjoy this format. I feel like if you know, I can keep these consistent and just have some some bullet points, some notes to go through um, and and hopefully some special guests on some of the future ones. Sounds like something that you guys enjoy being a part of. Um, oh, my gosh, Damien, you're so funny. Damien says Ellie has come a long way since student knocked out by deer during fire drill. That almost makes me want to pull that story up. Let me know if you guys want me to pull that story up. Um, <laughs> when I was working in my second TV news market, so this was in Medford, Oregon, we got a tip that there was a student knocked out by a deer who got spooked during a, a fire drill. And this girl, okay, you guys are saying show us. It might, yeah, it might take me a second to pull it up. Which channel was that on? I think that was on my... Okay, give, give me a second. I'll just keep talking here because um, <clears throat> we're just going to throw it back. You know why? Because we can do it live. And um, is it the rules are made up and the points don't matter? This shouldn't be that hard to find. I'm going to search for the word deer. <laughs> I can't believe I'm showing you guys this. Okay, so yeah, this the student like was knocked out by a deer, knocked unconscious, but she wanted to be interviewed. And I was like, really? That's crazy. Uh, so let me pull it up. It's only about a minute 44, but if you guys really want to see it, you can see it. Any go point. Let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. This is kind of fun. Yeah. So if, if you guys didn't know this about me, uh, I was a TV news reporter and anchor for almost 10 years. I've lived in several different states because of that. A lot of people ask me, cool, where did you do that? Well, you move around the country, you start in a very small market, and you work your way up the ladder until you decide to quit and go full time on YouTube, <laughs> which is what I did. But I'm from, I grew up in LA, Los Angeles, um, and my first job was in Rapid City, South Dakota. I moved there sight unseen uh, in about five days after getting the job. So that was kind of crazy. Um, and then after Rapid City, South Dakota, I moved to Medford, Oregon, which is where I did the story that you're about to see here in a second. 
And um, let's see, how do I change the tab here? Um, how do I change the tab? And then I moved to Tri-Cities, Washington, Kennewick, Washington to uh, become the main anchor there. And then most recently for TV, at least I was in Salt Lake City. I was there for about a year, not even a year. I broke contract to do YouTube full time. And here we are. Um, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for all you do, Ellie. Don't worry about the studio. Most of us just want more team space info. Yeah, I would love, I mean, in an ideal world, we could have, you know, myself, Zach, Felix, Marcus, Scott Manley, like, you know, all of your familiar faces that you love on a weekly space chat. But I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to happen. If you guys can figure that out, that'd be awesome. Oh, I have another suggestion. Interview Corey Steuben. I did actually quite recently. That was maybe back in March. I interviewed him as I was just getting home from the hospital. So I do have about a one hour interview with him. Okay. Let me see if I can hold on one second. Present. Oh, that's what I do. Sorry. Let's see here. Move. Is it this one? Attention oh, all our bears. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, how do I do this? Present. Stop screen. Oh, maybe that does it. Okay. Share screen. Okay, okay. All right. You guys want a really weird random video on your Saturday morning? You asked for it. Okay. Let me know if you can hear it. An Eagle Point High School student is on the mend tonight after a violent deer attack at school yesterday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emma Balkenbush. Brian Morton is off tonight. Newswatch 12's Eliana Sheriff sat down with the girl to talk about what happened. And we want to warn you, some of these pictures are graphic. Wow. An Eagle Point High School uh, was running a fire drill. Upon students exiting the building, there were two deer on campus that, that were spooked. And one of the deer ran into a student that was exiting for the fire drill. Um, I think I got hit in the face with a hoof. That student is senior Josie Lenley. She suffered a concussion and some serious cuts and bruises. A warning, some of the pictures following the accident are pretty graphic. But first, here is a video a student took right after the incident. You <laughs> hear the deer struggling after it likely broke its leg from oh, the force of the collision. I'm sad. joined by Josie to tell me about her experience yesterday. Tell me how all of this began. Well, so we were having a fire drill yesterday during school hours, and I made it halfway out there. And next thing I know, I was on the ground. I don't remember. I never saw any deer. <laughs> That's because the deer that what? hit her came so fast to the school. Speculate <sighs> something, possibly the sound of the alarm, spooked it. Staff called 911, and Josie was taken to the hospital. The school says the incident may affect how they practice drills in the future. They may add perimeter checks oh as my part dear. of their drill plan. <laughs> For now, Josie it's says not funny. this was a freak accident that she's glad to be walking away from. I said I don't know how I don't have a broken bone from that. Eliana Sheriff, Newswatch 12. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that was when I was quite green in my reporting. Um, but there you get a, a little glimpse of what I did every day, uh, which was, you know, assigned a story. I had a deadline, usually had to go live in the four or five and six o'clock news. And that was just a random story. Someone brought it up in here and some of you guys wanted to see it. But um, yeah, it's uh, I try to put my kind of news background or even a little bit of a news format on YouTube. But what do I love about YouTube? I have no time constraint. I can be goofy if I want to be goofy. Uh, I mean, I can wear whatever I want to wear within reason. Like, it seems like so, <laughs> uh, so much more creative license here on YouTube. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Jason, thank you again for the super chat. Interview Jessica Kirsch from Starbase. This is a great format, great story. You guys, I have tried to interview Jessica many, many times. She's a lovely woman, very sweet girl, but um, I still have not been able to make the interview work. 
We've taken pictures together. If you guys would like to see an interview, please help me convince her. Um, next time I go down there, we'll likely be, well, I don't know. I could see making a trip before the next Starship launch. If it's going to be in like two months, it might be cool to go down there within the next month. And that's part of the reason why I moved to Texas is because I'm only, you know, a five, five and a half hour drive down there. So if you guys want me to go down there within the next month, not for the launch, just to go down there, get an update, boots on the ground, let me know. It will be nice because last time I was down there, I was there on crutches. And so now I can say that I'm walking uh, almost without a limp at all. Um, definitely unassisted. I did, I walked like three and a half miles the other day with just no crutches. I'm back on my bike. I did 12 miles on my bike the other day, which just felt beyond good. So, um, yeah. So if you guys would like to, uh, to see an interview with Jessica, help me convince her, please. <laughs> um, I don't know if she gets shy. Uh, but yes. Thank you. I see some more super chats. I really appreciate that. Um, all right. So let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, your Rocket Ranch interview with the CSI Starbase guy was great. You guys, Zach is amazing. Zach is so like well informed, knowledgeable, um, such a good investigator. So Zach Golden is who you're talking about, CSI Starbase. I would love to. Honestly, I told him the other day, I was like, you should let me fly to Chicago so that we can co-host an episode from your studio. So if you guys support this idea, get on him about it. Because that's the whole point of me going full-time on YouTube. I can go anywhere, anytime, whenever I need to for the story. That's why when I got approved for NASA press credentials for this upcoming launch, I am going back to Orlando. Because mainly because I'm going there to finish what I started in the sense that I went there for the crew six launch and it was scrubbed at like T minus two minutes, 30 seconds, which was a huge bummer. And, um, I didn't actually get to see the launch from the NASA press site. And then I had a chance to see a launch from that same press site. I think it was the next day or the day after. Um, but as you know, I didn't turn around in time. So I saw like half of it, but I also didn't plan that. Some of you guys think that that was like planned. Um, yeah. So that's actually my most viewed short that that little clip has like almost 500,000 views. And so, um, you know, people, people think I'm an airhead or a dumb blonde or whatever, but that's all right. I shared it because I thought it was funny and it was an accident. And honestly, one of my favorite parts about the news is the news bloopers. I think that we love the bloopers because they show that we're all human. And so anyway, yes, I will look around for this launch. I won't make that mistake again. Um, okay. Wicked Kid One Show says, Ellie in space, I still think when Astro Peggy returned, she would make a great interview. I absolutely agree with that. I would love to interview her as well. So I'm going to write that down so I can make a connection. Astro Peggy. Also, while we're just, you know, casually talking here, did anyone see the Earth Day uh, conversation between Post Malone and the ISS astronauts? I think it's kind of funny that they posted that video with no, um, with the comments turned off because it was really awkward. Like it was really awkward. Let me know if you guys want me to play it, but um, yeah, nobody's chatting on their super chat. What gives baby UFO? A couple of people have super chatted and um, no one is forced to super chat. I obviously do appreciate the super chats. If you can't super chat, just smash the like button and share my channel. We are almost to 70,000 subscribers, which is pretty exciting. Um, and so that's, you know, we're, we're getting into the silver plaque territory when you surpass 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. 
you get that beautiful YouTube plaque. And it's kind of surprising because my returning viewers, I'd have to look at my analytics, but when I've looked in the past, it was like over 110,000 returning viewers, yet not even 100,000 subscribers. So it's interesting. I think some people either just don't subscribe to channels or I'm not exactly sure what what's going on over there. But thank you guys to everyone who super chats, including Raj. Thank you for the super chat. I really love to uh, just interact with you guys, hang out with you guys on a Saturday morning and these lives. I think the more that I do them, they are more, more fun. Uh, so let's see. Michael says, play a segment of the Post Malone. Uh, ISS interview. Fun fact too, I met Post Malone a couple years ago. That was pretty cool. Let's see. I'm going to show you a little bit. This is, I just want to know what you guys think of this because it was kind of awkward. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for, we the, are event. Ready for the event. Oh, wait, hold Post on. Malone, this is Mission Control yes. Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, station, this is Posty. Can you hear me? How do you hear me? And we have you loud and clear, Posty. Amazing, guys. Um, uh, my name's Austin. I wanted to say um, thank you guys so very much um, for talking to me. I know you guys are busy and uh, got a lot going on, and it's an honor for me, and um, it's such a cool thing uh, to be able to talk to you guys. And Austin, it's great to talk to you as well. I'm Steve Bowen. I am a crew member of Expedition 69. And I'm Woody Hobart, flight engineer on Expedition 69. And it's a real honor to talk to you as well. This is a real treat. That's super, super, super cool, man. And, and, um, I that's super, super, super cool, man. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I look, I appreciate this. This is a unique collaboration, but. Sometimes I feel like this in interviews, because you guys, I'll be honest with you, I have talked to some super genius people, and sometimes I feel like a kindergartner talking to, like, just a brain, so, but this, this just seems like either he didn't think about questions ahead of the, the interview here. Let's play the rest of it. I'd, I'd imagine you guys up there, up there um, have, um, the, have the most baller, most baller view, view uh, in the universe. Uh, in the universe. <laughs> Yeah. That's one way to look at it. The view from space is the most baller view from the universe. Um, what kind of um, what kind of weather can you guys see, see uh, on Earth? On Earth. How's the weather up there? That's actually, That's actually my favorite thing. Looking, looking out, out the window, window. Um, um, I, spent I spent a lot of time to see. We got a lot of ocean to look at. So I look at the cloud patterns, patterns and uh, one of the most amazing things you get to watch. I don't know if we've seen this yet. I was doing, doing some, some workout, workout and I started, started noticing, noticing flashes, flashes but lightning storms, thunderstorms at night, night are absolutely incredible. And the size of them can be absolutely amazing. You can stretch over just large portions of any land mass. And it's just amazing to watch the weather that way. Can you see anything we Look at that little mic pass. Oh my gosh, you guys. How cool would it be to be them? Yeah, I, exactly the same. The, the, the lightning storms from here are just incredible. You realize the frequency of lightning strikes over a large area. Large area. There's, lightning There's lightning striking, striking somewhere, somewhere on Earth pretty much all the time. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. And Woody, and Woody is this, this is your first time? time uh... This is true. This is Woody Hoberg's first time in space. And I was there to cover the Crew-6 launch. Again, it scrubbed. And then I headed back to Texas for Investor Day. And then I broke my leg. So we all know that that story, but I was there for his launch. And actually I was joined by John Tilko, one of his friends uh, from MIT, who was also there. We did a live stream together from the NASA press site. So um, it's really cool to see Woody now in space because I was there, um, you know, to see him for the send off. This is your first time up, man. Uh, what are your first impressions? Before I came up, People told me uh, two things I would notice when I look out the window. One, that there are no borders mm -hmm. on any, looking all around the world, you don't see borders. And number two, just how thin the atmosphere is. And both of those things are strikingly, strikingly true. Okay, looks like, uh-oh, your monitor is feeding back into playback. Oh, well, yikes. 
that's weird. The other, uh, the other video worked well. I'm glad that I <laughs> looked back at the right time. Sorry guys. Uh, but anyway, I thought that that was a very interesting selection to have post Malone call astronauts on earth day. I think maybe a different celebrity would have made sense. Uh, Michael Maxey subscribe you lurkers. I mean, I, I don't know if I want to call you lurkers, but, um, yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you to Jason for becoming a new YouTube member. I really appreciate anyone who signs up on my Patreon, on my YouTube channel membership. You guys are the meat and potatoes that keep this channel going. And I really love what I do. And um, so thank you for joining the Elian Space team. Uh, someone here said, when you meet up with Jonathan, have an English breakfast tea with him. Yes, I'm actually really excited because in August, I'm going back to Boston for a wedding and I will be meeting with Jonathan again almost exactly two years after the first time I met up with him in person and had, you know, some genuine, authentic lobster from the Boston waterfront. And so i um, really excited to see Jonathan again. If you guys have any ideas for stories that you want us to do during that trip, let me know. But we will be doing a live stream this week. So that'll be very fun. Jonathan is awesome. And I'm, ha I'm happy that he's so receptive to coming on the channel as much as he does. Um, and sorry to Wicked One Show. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> That's the way I was reading it. My bad. Uh, but thank you for watching this live stream. See, it's it always surprises me how easy it is for me to talk to myself because I'm not really talking to myself. We've been at this for, you know, over 45 minutes and it's because I get to talk to you guys. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Nostradamus wants to know how my leg is doing. My leg is doing very well very, very well. Um, I'm kind of surprised it still hasn't even been three months since surgery. So June 6th will be that three month mark. And I don't think many people, if you didn't know what was going on with my leg before would, would notice. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Mark says it might help to your subs to explain to simple viewers to understand YouTube. It took me weeks to understand and months to open a super chat account. So the way that I understand it, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is the super chat is kind of like a tip or, you know, a donation. So if you're watching my live stream and you really uh, want to ask a question or you just want to show support, you can super chat and enter an amount to kind of say thanks. So that's the way that I understand it. Um yeah, I don't know why that one had, uh, that video had so much feedback. Sorry about that. And if you heard the feedback from my desktop speakers, maybe you noticed that it sounded like I got water in one of the speakers because I think I did. So that was a big bummer. Hopefully, does anyone have any suggestions for how to fix a MacBook Pro speaker if you may have spilled a little water or something in it? Who knows? Maybe it was this um, oolong. No, this is jasmine tea. I've been on like an oolong and jasmine tea kick lately. This is iced tea. It's cold. But oh my gosh, you ever find something and you just get like obsessed with it for a little bit? Like I, I forgot how much I love the taste of jasmine tea. And now I'm like <laughs> ordering cases off Amazon and I just love it. Um, random but true. <clears throat> Let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to. Ha, ah, yes. Mitch from Boston. I can't even do it. Uh, I met Mitch. I was going to say at the Starship launch. No, I met Mitch at the shareholders meeting. Mitch, nice to see you in the chat. And um, yes, he is from Boston. He had a great Boston accent. I love the Boston accent. I don't know why. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Budget. Ellie, keep doing what you love doing great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Austin meetup. Ooh, I like this idea. 
Um, yeah, if you guys would be interested in an Austin meetup, obviously not all of you can attend, but if that's something that you would like to do, let me let me write that down. If you have a good place in mind, let me know. If not, I'm sure I can figure one out. But an Austin meetup would be really fun. Uh, speaking of meetups, if you are in the Orlando area, I will be doing a meetup on Sunday, June 4th at Pier 220 at 5.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So really looking forward to that. That is obviously the day after the launch on Saturday that I'm there to cover. And if you want to join for the meetup, let me know. That would be awesome. I have really enjoyed the meetups because <clears throat> I never know who's going to come. And I sometimes even get story ideas from the meetup. Uh, one of my, I guess it was my first meetup in the sort of uh, Orlando Titusville area. I had one gentleman who came <clears throat> and he showed me one of the Tesla solar roof shingles in the trunk of his Tesla, which I was like, okay, I'm sold. I want to do a story on it. Let me come to your house tomorrow and do a story about your solar roof, which I think he was quite surprised by. And that video is the second best video on my channel, which is crazy. Uh, so that, you know, came from that meet and greet. I also met another man who runs a Turo fleet of, I think he's over 10 Teslas now. And so I got to kind of hear that side of the business of putting your Tesla on Turo and what that is like. Um, and he has, you know, been a great uh, supporter of the channel. So I enjoy the meet and greets. Um, I've met some really cool people. And so if you want me to do an Austin meetup, that is definitely something I'm open to because I live here now. Uh, Ohio Pat puts it's free to subscribe. It absolutely is free, free 99. Uh, Trent, Trent says, Ellie, your strengths are your authenticity and interviewing skills play to them and prosper. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I obviously have like my dream list of interviews. One of those is of course, Elon. Um, I'm hoping that I'm closer to that since he follows me now on Twitter, but you know, he's very busy. So um, I would love to interview Elon. I would love to interview Lex Friedman, who's also here in the Austin area. Lex Friedman to me would be interesting because he's interviewed Avi Loeb, a Harvard astronomer who I also flew to Boston uh, to interview at his house. He's also interviewed Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut. So I feel like we've had some common, you know, links and Lex also apparently loves space. So, and he's supporting independent citizen journalism. So help me, help me somehow. Uh, I have not been able to get through to him, but that would be great. Hey, even Jeff Bezos would be pretty cool to interview, obviously. Um, speaking of, someone sent me this. I don't know who sent me this, but they sent me <laughs> this uh, Blue Origin New Shepard model rocket. Yeah, flying model rocket replica, ages 10 plus um, to my UPS box. I've had some really interesting stuff sent to my UPS box, and I appreciate everyone who sends me fun stuff in the mail like this. But Jeff Bezos would be great. Uh, he doesn't do a whole lot of interviews. And thank you for Ricker for the super chat. Ellie in Florida, could you please tour and do a report of the... NASA Vibration Lab. Let me write this down. Vibration Lab that shake and test customer payloads to test survival of the vibration. Okay, I will absolutely look into that and see if that's something that I can arrange. That is a great idea. So thank you for making the suggestion. Oh, <laughs> Charles, hey, my bad. <laughs> He reminded me that I was still sharing my screen. Again, I'm a one person show and it's a little bit obvious. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, yes. Wicked one show says just getting the calcium intake properly. I have been taking calcium supplements every single day and will continue to take them every single day. Uh, my leg is definitely getting stronger. And for those of you who suggested that I get a bone density scan, 
I did that even though my orthopedic surgeon said that it wasn't really necessary. And luckily it came back normal. So that's good. Um, let's see. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Andres, another super chat. Keep up the great work like the informal format. I like it too. It is, it's fun, but I think that it would be more fun if I had someone to bounce off these ideas with. It almost would be really cool if I had like a regular commentator that we meet, you know, every Wednesday at six or whatever it is. And we just talk, you guys, I really would love it to be Zach Golden because he's just perfect for this in my opinion. But um, maybe there's someone else that I can find that, you know, would be a great commentator. I mean, Joe Tegmeyer would be a great commentator too, which by the way, Joe Tegmeyer and I are going to be back in action. We're going to be doing a report from the new Starlink facility. We're going to also be touching on the Boring Company facility, which is right across the street um, in the Bastrop County area. And then we're also going to be giving you an update, hopefully on like the new Neuralink uh, office buildings. And I am doing that because I made a recent video about the Starlink Fa uh, facility here in Austin area. And you guys were like, you should get a drone. So Joe is the best drone pilot that I know. And he's been following this a little bit more closely than I have. So we're going to have a take two and a much better version of that video that I shared um, pretty recently. Okay. Yes. How about Peggy Whitson? Yes. I will reach out to Peggy and hopefully she is willing to do an interview. Okay. Yeah. Anthony makes a good point. You got an Elon interview, but a short one. I was able to ask him some questions. I think two questions ahead of the Starship launch during the Twitter space. So that was pretty cool. But I'm talking about like a walk and talk, you know, a one-on-one -on -one interview. That would be really awesome. Um, yeah. Bezos would be one heck of a get. I agree. If you guys somehow have connections to help me, let me know. Um, Tori Bruno. I feel like Tori would be open to it. Also, I used to ride horses for like 10 years. And so someone suggested before that if I could do a video with Tori on horseback, that would be really cool. And I agree. So maybe I'll put out a, a tweet and you guys can retweet it. Um, Let's see. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments here. Yes, Lex M Mitchell says Lex Friedman. Oh, this is freezing. Okay, Lex Friedman is an MIT alumni. He moved from Boston to Austin, Boston to Austin. So I know that he lives here. Um, so hopefully that's something that we can put together. Let's see. Yeah. Michael wants to know, have I thought about a visit and interview at Axiom Space and the new spacesuits? Absolutely. I thought about that. Um, it's just a matter of arranging that. <laughs> so I will write that down. You never know. Um, sometimes all it takes is asking. The answer is always no, if you don't ask. That is like my, that is like my, uh, my motto, actually. I'm, I'm like a very persistent person person. Uh, some of you guys might be surprised at how persistent. Okay. Another super chat. Thank you from 117 Warbird. He says your mic, I think he, I don't know. Uh, your mic sounds better, but please get close to your room is very echoey. You will see other podcasters place their mic two, three inches from their mouth. Thanks for all you do. So is this better? Yes. Scott Manley would make a great commentator, but he is very busy and I'm you know, he's cranking out his own videos and learning to fly and still working a full-time job. So that's the, that's the thing is like, it would be hard to make a consistent weekly commitment with someone because so often we have things that come up and, um, that might be kind of hard, but, uh, let's see. <laughs> Sorry. Some of these comments are kind of funny, but I don't necessarily want to give them 
screen time. Uh, Tank Watcher Vince, glad to see you and Joe Tegmeyer collaborating again. Joe is awesome. And he is super knowledgeable on the space side of things, even though you know him as the drone pilot for Giga, Giga Texas and Tesla. Um, I also made, well, kind of an announcement on my Twitter for my subscribers. I said, I have a big secret. Can you guess what it is? And I still have a big secret. And I plan to share that secret with you soon. It's hard to keep a secret. It's really hard for me to keep a secret, but um, it's coming soon. The answer. Okay. Yes, on equestrian videos. Yeah, I would love to interview Tori Bruno on horseback. I also feel like my leg is getting closer to being able to ride horses again. Uh, I was able and lucky enough to ride bareback on Boca Chica Beach last year. Um, with Gene, uh, I forgot what his Twitter handle is, but he is, you know, a surfer, a horseback rider, starbase lover. Um, and we had a great ride and he actually gives a lot of the SpaceX employees surfing lessons, riding lessons. Um, Cyan Proctor rode the same horse that I did. So I would love to go back down there and do another horseback ride, but I'm going to need like major bug spray because I got like <laughs> eaten alive during that photo shoot. Um, yeah. Andre says just a suggestion, but you may want to cover AI related news. Also, man, that is hard to keep up with. Elon is obviously deep into this and a lot of us have overlapping interests between space and AI. Yeah. So I, I feel like, you know, my main interest and main coverage obviously is about Starship and SpaceX developments, but I do cover Tesla events every once in a while. I do try to dabble into the Tesla bot um, advancements, for example. So every now and then you'll kind of see like an offbeat video and they tend to do pretty well. So I haven't heard too many complaints about that. Really hardly any. Um, so yes. We will be doing that live stream on Thursday evening, talking about Tesla bot and just probably AI in general. So we will, we will, we will do that. Um, okay. Sounds like the audio is a lot better. <laughs> My bad. Um, tell us about your merchandise. Yes. So I recently just did. I recently just did a second run of my 420 launch shirts and those did really well. So I may open up the store again. The thing is I'm working with a screen printing company out of Texas and they want to know how many orders obviously that they get. So we keep the store open for a short period of time and then we close it to make sure to get the orders out in time and not overprint. So, um, I may do a third run, but, uh, we just closed the second run and it did really well. Uh, okay. So yeah, John says Lex Friedman had an interview with Grimes, but it was a while ago. There may be fresh info to clean. Absolutely. I'm open to that too. I'm open to all of these things. It's just a matter of connecting with these people. And also if they have time. Um, okay. Sounds like the mic is a lot better. <laughs> uh, sorry, we are learning but you guys are helping me make this better. Much better. Okay. So much better. Wow. I'm going <laughs> to, uh Oh, I'm going to listen back to this and be like, wow, embarrassing. Um, let's see. Well, wow. Another super chat. Thank you guys. Uh, Ellie, you are an inspiration to all of fem femdom. Uh, thank you for all you do insert mountain climbing emoji here. I absolutely can't wait to get back to rock climbing. Cannot wait. I'm going to share a funny little story with you just because we're cool like that. And you guys have hung out on this live stream for this long. Um, I sometimes use the dating apps here. They're very depressing and I don't actually, oh, I have mixed feelings about the dating apps, but anyway, on hinge, one of the prompts is you know, all I ask is that you dot, dot, dot. And my prompt was be my belay for rock climbing. And so a couple guys will answer and say, yeah, I'd love to go rock climbing with you, whatever. And I have told a couple people, 
yes, I'd like to go rock climbing again, but I recently broke my femur from rock climbing. So I'll, I'll go with you when, when I can. And one of the guys was like, oh my gosh, are you that chick who broke her femur at the Austin uh, bouldering project gym? And I was like, yes, that is me. And that's kind of funny that a complete stranger on a dating app knows that I am the girl who broke her femur at the gym. <laughs> so that kind of made me laugh. We never met up by the way. Um, <laughs> Austin meetup, Jose says family friendly hike. I am not quite ready to hike yet. I think a better option may be at, I don't know, one of the restaurants here. Um, but when I'm ready to hike, I'd love to do that. Also a group hike I've learned is kind of difficult. Everyone's at like a different pace and a different level of fitness. And, uh, it, it, it can get a little bit, it can get a little bit difficult. So, <laughs> um, let's see. So anyway, that's, that's kind of, um, that's kind of the update. That's kind of the update. Uh, I'm just really excited that we have more little details about the next Starship launch. Obviously, we can track a lot of the progress visually with the help of RGB aerial photography, but to have Elon kind of confirm what's going on and then have that wonderful video from SpaceX, we know that ship 25 and booster nine, uh, that's the next combo. And so uh, very excited for that. Oh, we, we have some anti-dating apps. Never use dating apps. It's better to do what you like than meet people that way. I agree. I agree. You guys are really not into the dating apps. Um, yeah, I don't like dating apps. I, I really don't. I feel like it's interesting because you don't, you don't, you can look at someone on a dating app and find them attractive or whatever, or on paper, they look like someone that you'd be a good fit with. But then you can meet them in person and have absolutely no chemistry, but then maybe you meet, you meet someone in the wild, as I like to say, and you probably wouldn't have swiped, you know, right on this person on a dating app. But then you're like, wow, I have a lot of chemistry with this person. They're funny. They make me laugh. They make me smile. And so dating apps are just a complete grab bag and really a numbers game. And I'm quite exhausted by them. So I think that I'm uh, taking another break. <laughs> But anyway, that's that's a little bit off topic. It's also off topic that I have nice nails, but I'm proud of these nails because I, come on, focus, please. No? Oh, oh there we go. No. <laughs> I'm proud of these because uh, I usually bite my nails. And also I like never painted my nails when I was climbing all the time because it didn't make sense. But since I haven't been able to climb, um, these are my actual real nails, which is like maybe not a big deal, but it's kind of crazy to me because usually they're like chewed up and disgusting. So yes, I'm proud of them. <laughs> um, okay. I like this idea. I like this idea. Next time you're at Starbase, how about some local stuff like the turtle rescue people? What is SpaceX doing to protect the beaches? Yeah, I feel like <clears throat> excuse me, making another trip to star Starbase before the, um, before the next launch would probably be really nice. I think that it would give me a chance to focus on stories that, um, maybe I wouldn't cover during the launch, but would still be of interest to you guys. Like last time I was down there and we had a lot of time to kill before the launch, Joe and I went out to the Massey site and made a full video there. And a lot of you guys didn't have a ton of information on that site. So, um, yeah, I, I do want to address this comment. Daryl says, I'm sorry, you're lonely. I appreciate your sober life. It's getting more rare these days. I'm not lonely. It's not to say that I'm lonely. Okay. I want to put that out there. I have a lot of friends. I keep myself busy. You know, I, I do a lot of activities. Um, so it's not that I'm lonely. It's that I'm in a place in my life where if I want to have kids and start a family, I need to start thinking about these things. And I just turned 31 in March. Clearly I'm an open book guys. Um, and so it, it's not that I'm lonely. It's just that if I'm going to, you know, uh, make these things happen in the next couple years 
and I'm wanting to find a partner, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not that I'm lonely. It's just that, um, I kind of miss that. There's something so special about being in a relationship with someone. I mean, well, oh, falling in love, there's like literally no feeling compared to it, but, um, yeah, this is not what this, <laughs> what this podcast is about, but, um, just saying I, uh, not lonely. I just, I just know what I want. Um, let's see here. Oh, heck yeah. If the opportunity arose, would you take a ride on dragon as a journalist to do an in-depth interview with the ISS group in a heartbeat? Like, absolutely. I feel that dragon is very safe. Um, I would love to do that. And perhaps after I do my zero G flights, hopefully around October and experience that weight weightlessness, then I will be even more qualified to do a report from space. I just feel like that would be so valuable, uh, to have a reporter up there. Um, you know, we have obviously the astronauts who have research and their things that they have to do. They're not worried about, you know, creating stories on a deadline for you guys, but that's where I could come in. And at, man, that would be really, really, really cool. So, um, yeah, you say zero G is no walk in the park. Uh, well, it's certainly not cheap. <laughs> that's why I'm very, very grateful that I won that seat. That seat is $15,000 if you're going to pay to be on that flight. But, um, it, yeah, I'm really curious to see how it feels to adjust to this sensation of weightlessness. Um, yeah. Let's see. I really love reading your guys' comments, honestly. <laughs> awesome. Well, I have had fun with you guys. I actually have to get going. Oh, wow. More super chats. Right as I say that, you guys, thank you. Um, Hiroshi, thank you. And uh, Jose, have you met Emily Calandrelli. Be cool if you did. I have not. Um, I have not met Emily. Wow. You guys have a lot of suggestions. Uh, space nerve wants to know, can you give us a full video on what you can get from blue origin regarding new Glenn? So maybe there's a way to somehow get a tour. Uh, so and I say that because I've done a tour of Blue Origin, believe it or not. Somehow I got a, t a tour of Blue Origin before I got a tour <laughs> of SpaceX. I don't know how that works. Um, but they are very strict on the filming. We were allowed to film stuff in the lobby. But beyond that, when we went up the elevators, you know, behind closed doors to actually see behind the scenes in the factory, nothing. But I feel like it would really help if blue origin was more transparent. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I can talk them into it. I don't know. Yeah. Blue origin, very secretive. It's true. It's true. I think, um, you know, some people say, why do you only cover SpaceX or it's like a lot of people don't really seem to like blue origin. And I think part of that is that there's just not a lot of transparency. How can you get excited about something if you, barely know what's going on. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of stuff to work on, but connections are also everything in life. I think it's, it's sometimes not about what, you know, it's about who, you know, so if you guys know people that maybe could help out, that would be awesome. Yeah. Blue origin needs to work on their public image. That is definitely something that I think that I could help them with. Just throwing it out there. Wow, you guys are so nice. Tank Watcher Vince, thank you for the super chat. Uh, it sounds like you guys, or it looks like you guys really enjoy these these live streams. So I I tried to invite Zach today. He was busy. Um, tried to invite a few people. Let me know who you would like me to invite on the next one, or if you just enjoy kind of me talking and playing some clips. Hopefully the audio is better next time. Um, but I am just, I really like doing some of these updates live because 
you know, I can go into editing a news update and just make it strictly factual, but it's nice to hear your guys' opinions, your comments, and to engage with you. Um, so I think I'm going to be doing more of these. This is really fun. Um, let's see. Yes. Yes. Time to go watch RGV like button smash. Thanks for a great stream. Yes, definitely check out RGV. Um, he does great work. You solo is just great. Wow. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking to do it so solo and I don't know why that is, but, uh, I really enjoy talking to you guys. And so, like I said, the more I do this, the more comfortable I'll be with it, but I can't, I just can't say it enough how nice it is to be on YouTube and just be able to talk and have a conversation and not be constrained by a deadline or by having to state the facts. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eliana Sheriff. Our top story tonight, following up on that tragic homicide. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> don't want to do that anymore. So glad that I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, do I dare do a Twitter space as a host? Yes. Um, I, I want to do more Twitter spaces as well. I'm thinking of doing a Twitter space on Monday about going full time as a content creator. Uh, and so I'm going to have some people join me for that and just kind of like an AMA, um, an AMA about what it's like to adjust from working a nine to five or working for someone else and then working for yourself. But you know what? While I am my own boss and I work for myself, I really work for you guys. I mean, a lot of people thought that I wasn't going to go to the Starship launch because I was only a month out from the hospital and from the surgery and I was still on crutches and I will say I was very nervous to go to that launch because I was so limited in my mobility. But with the help of Joe Tagmeyer, who's amazing, um, I went there and we had an incredible trip, like beyond my wildest dreams, incredible. But I told you guys I was going to go to that launch no matter what. And I went and I made it happen. Um, thank you, Erkin, for the super chat. Can you speak any Swedish? No. <laughs> I don't even know one word of Swedish. I don't even know how to say hi. So uh, maybe you can give me some pointers. But um, yeah, I did. It's interesting. I did like a one of those 23andMe tests or whatever to see kind of what my origin nationality is. And, um, and I, I wondered that because I'm adopted. And so... I've been told that I'm this, this, and this, but I don't really know for sure. Um, just because I don't even know if my birth parents really know, but the answers were kind of surprising. I'll have to pull up what the results were, but I think it said that I was like British and Irish, which kind of surprised me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> hi is pronounced hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> uh, okay. Jody says you need a producer to tee up stuff. Yeah. I mean, I was able to tee up a few videos in this. Um, I don't think it was too terrible, but I really like StreamYard because I can kind of talk and then share the screen, play a video. Um, definitely a lot of fun. So yes, co-host suggestion, Felix. I don't think he would go for that. Um, I think he's pretty busy with his own channel, but I don't know. Who knows? Um, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I will do this again soon. I love you guys. You're awesome. I've had a lot of fun. Um, thank you for joining me on your Saturday and I hope that you have a great rest of your day.